the sun and moon may often be seen high in the heavens at the same time the sun rising in the east and the moon setting in the west the sun's light positively putting the moon's light out by sheer contrast if the accepted newtonian theory were correct and the moon had her light from the sun she ought to be getting more of it when face to face with that luminary if it were possible for a sphere to act as a reflector all over its face but as the moon's light pales before the rising sun it is a proof that the theory fails and this gives us <laughs> the theory of this The sun, as he travels round over the surface of the earth, brings noon to all places on the successive meridians which he crosses. His journey being made in a westerly direction, places east of the sun's position have had their noon, whilst places to the west of the sun's position have still to get it. Therefore, if we travel easterly, we arrive at those parts of the earth where time is more advanced. The watch in our pocket has to be put on, or we may be said to gain time. If, on the other hand, we travel westerly, we arrive at places where it is still morning. The watch has to be put back, and it may be said that we lose time. But, if we travel easterly so as to cross the 180th meridian, there is a loss there of a day, which will neutralize the gain of a whole circumnavigation, and, if we travel westerly and cross the same meridian, we experience the gain of a day, which will compensate for the loss during a complete circumnavigation in that direction. The fact of losing or gaining time in sailing round the world, then, instead of being evidence of the Earth's rotundity, as it is imagined to be, in its practical exemplification and everlasting proof, that the earth is not a globe.